Let it be a Nick and Jane. And let it be a Mr. Smith, a banker of Nick and Jane. They both keep their money in his bank. That's why we use the title Mr. Mr. Smith with respect. Nick really wants to buy, well, let's say Jane's bicycle, but he has no money. More precisely, he has money, but not enough, only $10, while Jane wants $100 for her precious bicycle. That's a problem. What should Nick do? Well, this bicycle is so desirable. He gives Jane his $10 as a deposit and asks plaintively not to sell the bike to anyone. He says that he will bring the rest of the money soon. At the same time, he runs to his bank, to the respected Mr. Smith, to get a loan for the missing $90. As ill luck, Mr. Smith has no money at this moment, but he knows perfectly about $10, which Nick gave to Jane. And where will Jane bring his money to? That's right, she will put these $10 in her lovely bank to the same Mr. Smith. Therefore, Mr. Smith asks Nick to come back tomorrow in the hope that tomorrow he will get these $10. And everything happens this way. The next day, Jane brings $10 to the bank. The bank provides Nick these $10 on credit Nick immediately gives them to Jane. She again puts them in a bank. The bank again provides Nick these $10 on credit, etc. As long as Nick the fool will gather enough money for the bicycle. Don't you get confused yet? Be patient, I told you. These demons have been trying to confuse you during thousand years. These damn economists and financiers. But anyway, we will figure everything out. So what do we have in the end? Nick finally got the bike from Jane. Wow! But at the same time, Nick owes $90 to the bank, Mr. Smith. And the bank, in its turn, owes $100 to Jane. In other words, those $10, which were existed initially, have magically turned into $200. $190 of debts plus real $10. But these $10 would also turn into $1,000, even in a million or a billion, if Nick would make a more expensive purchase. In this case, our $10 would make the increasing number of its cycles, circuits from hands to hands. That's it. So, what happens in today's world? SOS. It appears that banks also make money out of thin air and multiply them. Not only Fed can produce money, but banks either. In short, everybody can do this, except you and me. We are not in the business at this celebration of life. I would like to print or draw some money as well. In fact, these banks multiply money without any control. And we're still wondering why the banker lives better. What are naive fools are we? Now it is clear why. The one who produces the money, of course, lives better. But this is not enough. From this moment, poor Nick will never be able to repay his debts owed to the bank. No matter how hard he would work, silly Nick doesn't know it yet that he's in slavery to the bank in credit bondage forever because those $90 which he owes to Mr. Smith do not exist in nature at all. Sly Mr. Smith made his money out of nothing. He created them out of thin air, just one click. And $10 turned into $200. Yes, but you can object re 